Hi everyone and welcome to the next series of videos on the history of medicine. And finally ladies and gentlemen, we've left the industrial revolution and we've moved into the 20th century. Now, when I was younger, probably my favourite band ever, The Jam. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard any of The Jam songs, go and check them out. They are superb. I'm a little bit biased. But this album here, this is the modern world. This is the modern world, said Paul Weller. And that's what we're looking at in this series of videos. The modern world, the 20th century. What was medicine like in the modern world in the 20th century? Hopefully these videos will help you to understand that. Now, quick recap. Go back to the Industrial Revolution, the 1750 to 1900, a period of 150 years. Yes, there was progress. Yes, there were changes. Prevention of medicine got a lot better. The vaccinations, public health, the towns, the cities, the streets were cleaned up, preventing disease. But as we entered the 20th century, there was still one big area left, and that was curing disease. What could be done for people who already had the disease? And that's what we're going to start looking at today. Now, before we start the video properly, one of my terrible jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, there's a gun. Quick joke for, well, it's a quick question. What do a gun and a newsreader have in common? What do a gun and a newsreader have in common? Any ideas? Well, they both need a bulletin to work. A bulletin! <laughs> hey! Sorry about that. Terrible joke. Terrible joke. Hardly any more. Now, what we are going to be looking at in this video, bullets. Ah. Bullets, medicine, that doesn't seem properly, does it? That doesn't seem normal. But not just any sort of bullets, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, magic bullets. Ooh, magic bullets. Now, what am I on about magic bullets? Do I mean the magic bullet that allegedly shot President Kennedy in 1963? If you don't know about it, go and look that up, a very interesting part of history. But no, not that sort of magic bullet. What we are looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, is not a bullet that is bad, which could actually harm the body. We are looking at a bullet, or bullet in inverted commas, that actually is good and helped the body. So that's what we're going to be looking at. The discovery, the development of what was called magic bullets. So, we start with a man called Paul Ehrlich. Now, he was a German scientist and he had been a member of Robert Koch's team. Robert Koch, back in the Industrial Revolution. Bacteriology, finding out different germs, looking at them under the microscope, staining them with dyes so they could see the germs. And Ehrlich was a member of his team. But then he left Robert Koch and set up his own team. That shows us the importance of research teams, teamwork. He sets up his own team and he's determined to try and develop medicine further. So using his knowledge from Koch's team, using his knowledge about the stains and the dyes, what they start to do is stain and dye the germs or the bacteria under the microscope so that they can isolate them and then hopefully they can begin to kill them and cure disease. So 1905, right at the start of the 20th century, Ehrlich and others isolate, stain and dye the bacteria which causes a sexually transmitted disease called syphilis. Now, syphilis was a terrible disease back then, before our modern medicines. Now, it could send you insane and it could actually kill. So it was a very, very bad disease. 
Ehrlich begins to try to cure this disease. 1905, they spot the bacteria. But it takes years and years and years testing in the laboratory. Now the German government provides him with the money. There's two more factors, government, finance. And they test loads and loads of different chemicals, mixing them together in what we call compounds. And they test over 600 and they get no success. They are not able to kill the germ, which causes syphilis. So what happens next? Well, a new man joins the team, teamwork. And for that, I need a hat because his name was Dr. Hatter. Hatter, a hat. Hey, I'm sure you'll be able to remember that. Dr. Hatter from Japan traveled to Europe and joins Ehrlich's team. Teamwork, communications, the travel. And they say to Hatter, right, well, this is what we're doing. This is what we've done. And they say, look, over there, they're all the compounds, the mixtures that we've tried and failed. Please retest them for us. Well, if you're Dr. Hatter, no, that's not a very good job. They've already tested them. They don't work. Oh, why have they given me that job? But no, Dr. Hatter, very determined man. He says, OK, I'll test them all. Mixture number one. There we go. Failed. Mixture number two. Failed. And so on and so on and so on. Mixture number 604, failed. Mixture number 605, failed. Mixture number 606, oh, oh, hang on a minute. It's effective. It works. Dr. Hatter had shown that somehow they had made a mistake. Wow. Mixture or compound number 606 killed the bacteria, which then caused syphilis. So they had got the first magic bullet, 1909. They do some more tests and in 1911, they are able to use it on humans. And it was called Salvarsan 606, the first magic bullet. Now you would say, brilliant, that's really good. A big step forward there, but there was some opposition. There often was opposition, ladies and gentlemen, to medicine. Why would they be opposed to that? Well, part of the mixture was poison, so people wouldn't really trust it. And it was, in some ways, it did have a bad effect. Secondly, it was a very painful injection. And thirdly, the church, who was still quite powerful, not as powerful as they had been back in history, but the church were not really in favour because they only wanted sex within marriage. So they don't really want something which will cure syphilis. So that was the first magic bullet. For 20 years, there's not much happens as regards magic bullets. And then we get to 1932, a man called Gerhard Domag, D-O-M-A-G-K, Domag. And he's been working and he's been developing in his science laboratory and he's found a red dye, which he called Prontosil. And he found that it cured blood poisoning in mice. But he's not tried it at all in humans. 1935, though, Domag's own daughter catches herself, pricks her finger with a needle. And the needle was infected and she gets blood poisoning and it's probably likely that she will die. Now, what's the chances that the girl who's got the blood poisoning, her own father has possibly got a magic bullet which will cure her? What would Domag do? He's never tested it on humans. It's one of those unbelievable stories in medical history. Domag then says, I've got to give Prontosil to my daughter. Well, what would happen? She was cured. Yes, she had a red face and red skin, and that was only temporary, but she was cured. The second magic bullet, Prontosil. 
1935. They then did more tests on it and they found that actually the thing inside Prontosil was something called sulfonamide. And then through the 1930s and into the 1940s, some French scientists developed that and they begin to get cures for diseases like pneumonia, scarlet fever and some sort of meningitis, not all. So magic bullets were a step forward. Well, who is important in this story? Ehrlich, of course. Domag, of course. Hatter. Hatter, remember, he travelled from Japan and he said to Ehrlich, Oh, look, I've come to help you. And Ehrlich said to Hatter, Oh, that's good. We could always do with an extra hand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So that's a terrible joke. Absolutely terrible. I'm sorry about that. So there we see. The story of magic bullets. How important were they? Where would you put it on the scale? Well, in some ways, yes, they were very important. It's the first step forward in curing diseases. Against that, they were only able to maybe cure one disease, not all diseases. For something which killed more than one germ, we'll have to wait for a later video. But it was important. The modern world, this is the modern world, had started with quite a good step forward. Change is happening. Progress is happening as we enter the 20th century. And there was more to come. Magic bullets. Hope it's been useful. Speak to you soon. All the best now. Cheers.